Good evening, everyone. I see we have, uh, I think, 21 people here. My name is Diane Mara, and I am the webmaster and also a visual faith ministry coach. And I am the producer of Tuesdays at 8. And this evening, we have a wonderful program planned for you. So I want to greet you with grace and peace. And as um, Paul said to the Thessalonians, we always thank God for all of you, remembering you in our prayers and continually recalling before our God and Father your work of faith, your labor of love, and your enduring hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We're so happy that you are gathering here this evening with us as we hear Karen Hunter, who is a visual faith ministry coach also, sharing her visual faith practice of using a faith planner. This is our weekly time for sharing, inspiring, and encouraging each other in our faith walks. But let's open this time in prayer. Father, we come to you this evening with open minds, ears, and hearts to be encouraged. We ask to be delighted in your word and interact with you creative, creatively. We seek your blessings in our relationships, and we give thanks for Visual Faith Ministry and the tools and practices they share so willingly for remembering, trusting, discipling, and telling of the good news. We ask that you would strengthen each of us to be spending more time with you consistently. Amen. So as you can see on the screen tonight, this was supposed to be live, but technical difficulties that prevented us from doing a live streaming with Karen. However, the good news is she is on the call and she will be able to answer any of your questions that you write in the comments. So I hope you all clicked on the give Facebook um, permit, give StreamYard permission to Facebook so that I can see your name and your comments and I will be posting them on the screen and Karen is also able to answer them. So let's see if I can do all the buttons correctly right now. Um, okay, I think we're all set to go. So you're just going to be watching the screen. I'm going to be over on the side and you, I've got two videos. One is just uh, Karen's introduction and explaining her faith planner practices. And then on the second video, in between, I'm going to give us a little break to ask questions or make comments. And um, then we'll watch her second part of her video presentation, which is more about the technique. And she's going to answer lots of wonderful questions. You are just going to have so much fun tonight and be inspired. So let me get this started. Hi, this is Karen Hunter, and I'm here with Visual Faith Ministries to talk about my faith planner tonight, Tuesday at 8 o'clock. So fun to be here, and I'm sorry we can't be live. I'm coming to you recorded from my craft room at my home in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. It's a little mountainy here, and so that might be a contributing factor to why our streaming wasn't working correctly. But anyway, I am super happy to be here with you guys tonight. I know a lot of you are going to tune in. And please, if you have any questions, just type them in and I will be in the chat room with you and I'll be answering them also. So a little bit about me first. I'm Karen and we live in Harbors Ferry, West Virginia, like I said, with my husband of 25 plus years and our darling daughter who is in middle school this year very exciting time for her we um have only lived here about five years or so before that we were in virginia which is actually really close we're only a little bit from the border with virginia and before that you might hear it in my accent um, i'm a wisconsin girl so my husband and i actually have known each other since kindergarten we were neighbors in a little suburb in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And so we have known each other a long time. So he is amazing to put up with me all these years. Um, I have been a crafter for a super long time. You can tell I have a lot of stuff. Um, I've been scrapbooking for most of my adult life and making cards, any kind of paper crafts I've always loved. Um, but today we're going to talk about visual faith and when I was first introduced really to visual faith, that was with Connie Denninger. 
in a little workshop she put on um, at her church in Virginia and I attended and was hooked. I loved being able to incorporate my growing faith with a craft that I loved. And so we did all kinds of projects. Um, she calls them Keeping the Faith Projects and there's a bunch of them on the Visual Faith Ministry website and you'll be able to find some of those. So I got a lot of ideas from her and then I took them back to my home congregation and I began teaching classes at my home congregation. And we had a lot of fun. We did a lot of different kinds of projects that were just hands-on incorporating faith and a family and, um, we just did some fun things. In terms of Bible journaling, that didn't happen until I'd say maybe five or six years ago. And this was about the same time that uh, Shannon Noel and Illustrated Faith was just starting out. And I still remember when I was on Pinterest and all of a sudden I saw Bible pages. So it was scripture pages with drawing and writing and painting in it. And I thought, oh my, that looks awesome. And so I began to research that and you know, found Shannon Noel and Illustrated Faith and this whole Bible journaling thing. I was just, my heart stirred. I was immediately struck. I had always kind of struggled with making sure, you know, I wanted to check that box that I was in the word, that, you know, I was doing what I was supposed to do. But inevitably it seemed like almost a chore. It was something that I had to do because I knew I was supposed to. Um, but once I found Bible journaling, I tell you, that was a game changer for me. That just made me want to be there, want to interact with the word. Yeah, it was, you know, fun for me, but really once I started spending that time in the word, I delighted in it. I wanted it more and more. And it has been the thing for these last five, six years that has really um, kept me in the word consistently more than anything else. As of you know, I'm a pretty prolific Bible journaler. I am publishing things on Instagram and my Facebook page, Karen Scraps, um, mostly, mostly every day. Um, again, it's not because I'm trying to produce all, all this, it's just that I delight in being in the word and interacting with it in this creative way. And I think the more I'm in it, the more I learn, then there's something new to follow, something new to dig up and learn what God is speaking into me and, and how he's forming and shaping me and how then I can pass that on in my relationships with others. So Bible journaling has just been a real heart change for me and how I approach the word. One of the questions in regards to Bible journaling that I get a lot, and this kind of applies into my faith planning as well, is where do I get, you know, how do I know which verse to go to, which scripture to look in? And honestly, that just comes from a lot of different places. Uh, one of the things that I do consistently is in, I take notes during Sunday sermon, and that is usually something I'm reflecting on then, and that'll be Bible journaled more often than not on Monday morning. And so I'll do something in my Bible or in the journal, and then it also gets into my faith planner. Then the other days of the week, sometimes I'm working on maybe a, a new kit from Illustrated Faith. So there's material that I'm getting from there. Sometimes I'll be working in the study that I'm doing with my ladies Bible study, for example. Um, we're about to start a study on Psalms. And so you'll probably see a lot of Psalms and journaling in Psalms and that in my faith planner as well. Or I just use maybe a daily devotional like portals of prayer. Um, I've always got those around. So that's something, you know, there's always a scripture verse in some thoughts. And so that's, I get a little bit of a lead from those things on where to look. Or, you know, there's always those times where, oh, Lord, I'm really struggling in this area. Um, and I'll do some searching with, you know, Blue Bible app or something like that to help me find scripture that I can um, look into and, and reflect on. So meditating in the word, doing it creatively is um, just what I love to do. So that brings me to the faith planner, which is really what we're talking about. And I started faith planning 
a little over four years ago, probably like four and a half years ago. So it was something that came about it was when uh, planners began to be popular and I was like, oh, I like that. I like that idea. But I didn't want to use my planner to have all of my appointments or, you know, birthdays and all of that stuff in there. That stuff I usually keep on my phone. And so I was thinking of what, you know, what way could I use a planner that would make sense for me? One of the things that I struggled with was how to um, how to incorporate prayer. You know, I always said, oh, I'm going to pray for you. And I, you know, maybe write their name down on a little piece of paper. And, and I tried some other things too, you know, to have a, a prayer list, a prayer schedule, and they would be good for, you know, a week, maybe a month, but not usually. I just couldn't stick with it. So that was something, again, that I was really trying to find a way where everything would make sense. I, I, was doing well being in my Bible uh, because of the Bible journaling. Um, I wasn't doing as well, I felt, in in my prayers and being consistent with that. And so I was kind of looking at that time for a way to bring those things together. So um, I found a planner and I just started experimenting with it at first. Um, you know, I'd write some things down do little this, little of that. Um, I don't really have any of those pages that I experimented on, but I do have four years worth of faith planners that I've been consistently in. Are you ready for them? Wow, right? That's a lot of praying. That's a lot of writing scripture. That's a lot of consistency. And it's it's because, it's because I was I looking, was looking for, something for something that fit, that fit me. me. And I and I and want I, to and emphasize, I want to emphasize how, how, you, do that, how, how you do that, how you do that, how you that. And I'm gonna share some of that with you. But I also want but I also you to want think about you to what, think is what is gonna work for you because your because your uh, way of approaching this way of approaching this might be a little bit different. That is wonderful because the point is being in the being word, there consistently, being there if you consistently, want to be incorporating your prayers and if you want to be things, incorporating your prayers me, or other things, I mean, for me, really the faith gathering planner place was where really I could a gathering record the scripture place that I'm encountering where I could the record the scripture Maybe that I'm encountering other, for the um, week. Maybe some of the other devotional um, material or other things that I could bring devotional together material or other things that I could bring together as well. and so with my prayers as well is, and so it's just that the faith it's where planner is is just together. that it's where all of the things basis, gather together and i um, do it on a weekly basis something and, that is um, eye-opening it's been for me something that something is that eye-opening is, um really improved my prayer life and my consistency and i'm Wasn't that awesome? I'm, I'm just so excited that, that Karen is here. So I saw a couple comments that you were having some echoing problems and I'm very sorry about that. Not sure how that was happening. I tried to mute my mic and maybe that helped. Um, is it gone now? Thank you. Can you please make some comments because I can't be on here live while I'm streaming and hear it. I have to just be in it. So if anybody would just please confirm that we're okay now with the echoing. I will make sure that my mic is muted when I play the second part of the video. But I had a couple questions that um, I wanted to throw out to the audience. And one of them is, what practices do you use to document your time in the world? in the word, excuse me. So Karen has talked to us about faith planners. Maybe you're already doing faith planners. I don't really know. Um, but kind of give me a sense of uh, share with us. What practices do you use to document your time? Are you using a faith planner, using a TN journal? Kind of what are you doing? And if you go ahead and write your comment in, I can show that um, some of the responses as we're seeing them. So I'll wait a minute while people type. This is definitely a delay. 
And I see people keep joining us and that's wonderful. So for those people that can't join us while we're live, this obviously will be in the Facebook group when we're all done. And um, I'm excited that we've got StreamYard is the software that we're using. So the question is, what practices do you use to document your time in the Word? Okay, so now I'm seeing some people. So Ann Gillespie said Bible journaling and prayer cards. That's awesome. Prayer cards we've talked about. We're going to be, that's going to be one of our topics coming up also. Jamie said she does calendar journey, journaling. In fact, Jamie, I think that you posted today, somebody posted a picture of their calendar. And um, that actually is a calendar that we have at Visual Faith Resources that you can just download the blank and just fill that in. And you know what's great about that? And Jamie, if you want to make a comment, is that um, uh, it's quick. So you don't have to write pages and do all that. If, you, if you're really in a time crunch, it still gives you opportunity to stop and document. And let's see. And we've got Candace. Hi, Candace. Portals of Prayer calendar. Now, Candace, you're going to have to show us a picture of that. Maybe I'm blanking on exactly that there was a calendar. I know that there's portals of prayer. Um, oh, I think Connie uses that too. Okay. Well, we can continue to talk about that. Okay, Karen, you said, I like to mix it up. Faith planner always, but then in my Bible or a TN or another journal. And you're actually going to see the other ways that Karen incorporates all of this. Erica, prayer cards and prayer notebooks. Awesome. And then we've got... Facebook user. Next time, if you could make sure that you just give us permission so we can see who you are and welcome you to our community. I've been using a bullet journaling system. Excited to hear about the faith planner. Excellent. You're going to love when you see the next part of Karen's presentation because she does bullet prayers and you're going to be able to see that. Okay, let me show you. Let's see. Jenny. Miss Jenny, I am a bullet journaler, including my gratitudes, praying in color, daily scripture writing, etc. I cannot wait to see Karen open these faith planners of hers. Yes, you are going to see them shortly, and you're going to be so excited. Uh, let's see, I've got um, Donna. Donna Brockley says, mainly journaling right now. I have not been disciplined enough to stick to one practice. That's okay. And that's the whole point of our weekly time together at Tuesdays at eight is to encourage each other. And I love what Karen said is find what fits you. So you're going to look at Karen's work and um, say, oh, I could never do any of that, but that's okay. And then somebody else might look and go, oh my gosh, this is perfect. I love this. I'm a scrapbook person and I could just fit right into this. So the goal is to figure out what works for you and what fits in your life. Debbie said gratitude journal and prayer spaces. Thanks, Debbie. Those are some really good things. And Denise Miller has shared, I use the Christian planner for my daily Bible scripture documenting. A Christian planner. Mm, not sure what that exactly is. Um, maybe you can show us uh, next time. And Donna said, prayer cards is big for me as well. And those are awesome. And we've talked about those. And I'm wondering, Donna, if you're doing prayer cards for yourself and or do you send them to people? We've talked about how you can snail mail them to make a copy, keep, um, keep your copy, and then send that directly to someone as a way to not only spend time in God's word and go deeper with him, but also to bless others at the same time. Okay, just a few more. So we've got Patricia Clark says, I'm trying to learn Bible journaling and writing in a book of commonplace. Those are awesome. I love commonplace books. Claudina, I'm getting my calendar ready to go for October. I posted a picture. Yes, you did. Thank you for sharing that. So awesome that you're getting ready to jump into that. And let's see. Candace said portals of prayer. Oh, thanks. Candace makes calendar templates for us. Okay. Thank you. See, I didn't realize that. We'll have to put the link up. If anybody has the link for that on the site, you could really help me out and post that. That would be great. And then Jamie said, I do mini bulletin boards in each square. My takeaway from the day's devotion. 
Thanks, Jamie. That is great. And let's see, I'm going to maybe do one more. Belinda says calendar journaling verse a day and does traveler's notebook. So we've got some really active people in here and that's awesome. And so people have asked questions and I think people are answering. Also, someone said they do hymn journals and, um, Oh, great. Donna said, I do both for myself, others, and also Bible memory verses for myself. Thanks, Donna. And Jenny said, if you snoop around on Pinterest under bullet journals, you will see many examples of how people use them. Thanks for that tip. And if you have any links um, that you want to post in the in the comments, that would be great. Because when the call's over, then people will be able to see that. And then somebody's asking, what is a commonplace book? So for those of you who do that, you might want to put a link to that too. And let's see. Okay. And I think I asked Denise, what was a Christian planner? So thank you for the answer, Denise. The Christian planner is a planner printed by Faithbridge Inc. It's just a specific brand of planner. Thank you so much. Again, if you have um, a link for that, be great. And then Connie said, Connie rescued me here. The calendars or portals of prayer are uploaded in the files each month in the VFM group. So it's in our Facebook group here under files. You will see those calendars. Okay. And Karen did show you where the um, portals are. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is let's move forward and watch the second video. So hold on for my technology. I've got to do some very strange things here, but Okay. I showed you showed my you. big stack of planners and this is my current planner for 2020. And um, I don't know if I had mentioned it before, but normally these planners from Dayspring are 18 month planners. It's called the 18 month agenda. And um, because my planners get pretty thick, I actually take out six months and then just use it as a regular 12 month planner. So. Just an FYI, it's super easy to do. I have a little video that shows how I bend back the coils and then remove the pages. And I, I kind of save the pages, um, just reaching over here. And here's like the pages I took out from this one. And I save them and I cut them and I use them just for all kinds of things in my planner or in other crafts or things that I'm doing. So this is my planner. And I wanted to show you some blank pages. So this particular planner is the one I've been using for four years now. And the reason I like it is because the weekly spread is so open. And that allows me a lot of freedom to um, put things in how I want them. And when you look at all four of my planners, really the weekly spread has not changed a whole lot. So it's something, it works for me. I continue to use it and I'll probably continue on until for some reason it doesn't work for me anymore and, and I'll change things up then. So um, I don't do much with the monthly layout. Sometimes I'll actually, you know, maybe steal some of this paper, let's see if I have one of those. Yeah, I stole some off of this just for coordinating some pages into something else. Here, I stamped on that little bit there. So I'll do that sometimes. Otherwise, I'm only working week by week. So the first thing that I normally do, let's just take a look at the spread real quick from a few weeks ago, oh, from August. Um, the first thing I do is I give myself a little space, kind of like a short column on the side to do my bullet prayer list. And I really just do bullets so that it will jog my mind to pray for that person. Usually you always see Dave and Hannah up there, my husband and daughter, and then other things. And I know I publish this every week. So that's one of the reasons I keep things to a bullet list or I might just do initials because I know what it is. God knows what it is, but maybe not everybody needs to know what is on that list. So usually I'm using a little bit of washi tape 
Let's see if I can find another page with something different. That's washi tape. This is actually a little bit of paper, so I just cut a small strip of paper to make that border. I've well, Here I just did with a pen, and then I colored or inked in the inside to make a column for my prayer list. So a couple different ways, just how I'm feeling. That's another piece of paper. Um, I have used stamps before, but I don't see any of that. So this is this week's uh, in progress layout. And I used a little bit of washi tape. Um, this is the one right here. And the thin washi tapes, if you can find them, sometimes they're a little bit hard to find, but the super thin washi tapes work really well here. But if you can't find the super thin, just take the regular washi tape, take a craft knife and make your own little strip. It can be a little wonky or, you know, feel free to use your, now we got a small strip there. Feel free to use your um, ruler to get a nice straight line. I'm gonna keep that tape down on my desk because hmm, I might use it later. So just a little tip for you. So that's my first thing. I have my column for my prayer list. And I usually do a little bit more washi. And I'll stamp. This was a stamp um, from SRM stamps, but they're no longer available. So I probably shouldn't show you that. <laughs> but you can use stamps here. You can use um, stickers. Uh, I use lots of different kinds of stickers. Alphabet stickers, I probably should have taken stock in because I have a lot of alphabet stickers. Um, alphabet stamp. I mean, if you don't, you don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff, guys. I think that just having one or two sets of good alpha stamps is going to go a long way. It'll fit all of your needs. I like stickers, but you know, you always run out of the E's and you always run out of the N's and the S's and the T's. So stamps means you can use them multiple times. Um, I, I have a nice collection of alphabet stamps, but again, I just recommend, you know, go and get a couple of really good ones. And um, Diane will put some links up. I buy a lot of my stamps from Illustrated Faith or Sweet and Sassy Stamps has really a good selection of alphabet stamps. Keep in mind when you're choosing an alphabet stamp, um, if you're gonna do this in your Bible margins, you want maybe a stamp like this, which is skinny. The letters are really skinny so that you can fit a lot of letters, you know, to make a longer word in your Bible margin. So keep that in mind when you're making a choice. Um, this is one of my favorites as well. And this particular one isn't available, but there's all kinds that are like this. It's just an outline and it's fairly small and skinny so I can fit a nice big word in my Bible margin. And I like to have the outline style, which is kind of like what this one is right here so that you can add some color. You can add a little color and coordinate it to you know whatever you're working on at the time. So that's just a little side note on stamps. And I also should mention my favorite stamping ink is this Versafine pigment ink in black. Um, I like it because when it goes on the page one, it gives a really nice stamp. So, you know, clear image is important. But after a few seconds, you can color and it's not going to um, bleed or look, you know, instead of green, it'll look all black or something. It's not going to do that. So that's a reason I really like this particular stamp. And I think Dan is going to be linking all of this stuff up for us also. If you have any questions on that stuff, let me know. So back to my faith planner. You know, one of the reasons I started this that I mentioned before is to have everything come together for me for the week, my prayers, and also the scripture that I'm encountering throughout the week. So today is Tuesday, and I always set this up maybe Sunday afternoon or, you know, sometime over the weekend so that it's ready to go. That'll be my first little thing over here. And then the next thing I normally add is my sermon notes. So this week, 
Um, I am able to go to church right now, which is super awesome. I hope you are too. Um, but if not, you know, you can still listen to sermons online and everything. So that was my bulletin. This is what I take to church. Those are my notes. And yesterday in my morning time, and I usually do all of this super early in the morning, um, this is the page that I Bible journaled. So what I'll do is I'm journaling this, and then I'm taking a little bit of that and putting it into my faith planner. So you can see I stamped here, and then I stamped over here, just so that it's it's easy, it's fast. I'm not pulling out additional supplies for the most part, and um, it doesn't feel then like a completely different project. I'm just bringing some of that in. So that was from Monday, and I took some of these notes, and I put them here in these cute little, that was a little stamp that I just did on some colored paper. And then this right here, and this is something I do a lot. You guys can do this too. I cut some stuff out of my bulletin and I put it in here. Super easy. Sometimes I take some part of the song out. I think there was a page back here where I did that. Here's another, took the readings. Um, yeah, here's some song that I took from the bulletin, some more of the reading. So sometimes I'm just, um, oh, here's the confession of sins. I took that out this week. I must have been pulling a lot of stuff from my bulletin this week. So great ideas that you can just add to. So it doesn't take a lot of time, but you're getting the scripture in there. You're getting your thoughts in there. And you will be amazed how this then kind of carries over into your prayers because when you have this in front of you you're looking at your prayer list you have the scripture and praying god's scripture back to him is awesome um if you're like me and sometimes you just don't seem to be able to find the right words this this really helps a lot um this morning i did a little bit in my illustrated faith kit let's see this was my page from this morning. I was researching or digging into this word endure. So I had my Blue Letter Bible app out and found um, Strong's uh, definition and put some of that in. I had my Lutheran Study Bible out and there were some really neat notes. So I copied those in and then I have my prayer. And I took some of that again, stamped here, stamped here. Had some definitions, had some definitions, have the scripture verse, have the scripture verse. So again, not adding a whole lot of time, but just kind of copying or putting into this gathering spot what I was working on in the morning. So that, that will happen throughout the week. And then by the end of the week, it all gets filled up prayer list is filled in. And, you know, I add little fun things that I have here and there. Um, but this, this, that can come from anywhere. A um, little bit of extra washi tape. One of the extra, one of the things that I get asked a lot is how do I make it look all connected if I'm doing it on different days? And what I do is I'll decide on the color palette ahead of time. So I kind of take my cue from the little stripe that's already in the faith planner or in the planner. And I'm like, okay, I'll stick to pinks. And so I make sure my stripe is pink. I keep pink stuff around me, whether it's the washi or whatever. Um, I'll have a few markers or colored pencils out that that's what I'm going to grab for. So again, it's, it's something that limits me. I'm not looking through tons and tons of supplies. I know I'm going to keep this very closed in terms of the color palette. And just doing that little bit makes sure everything comes together. Normally, I'll decide on a washi tape. So you can look at this page and there's bits of washi tape here and here and here and here. It's all the same washi tape. So again, it's something that brings it together. I use some little stickers here. So I decided to use them over here too, and that helps some uh, to create some continuity. So already you can see I'm doing that on this page. I got that pink sort of color palette. Um, in this case, um, 
in the day spring planners in the back there's some stickers and Diane had asked oh do I ever use those stickers well I do so here's some label stickers and I've been using these two colors right here you can see them here and again here and again up here and again that's that's repeating and so that's going to keep my page looking nice um, but honestly the looking nice is not what's as important as getting that scripture in here and then being amazed because God's Word is living and active and you can see then how you can pray some of these scriptures into your prayer list how you know here I did this study on enduring and holding fast and how timely is that when there's so much um, Oh, I don't know upheaval I guess in the times right now and knowing that um, our faith is based on God's grace not on the things we do or don't do and that that is secure in him and um, we can pray to uh, God to help us stay steadfast in the faith and and that is definitely something I would pray for my husband and for my daughter and um, for you know I have the teachers and the schools down here and so praying those things for them um, maybe I wouldn't think of doing that otherwise but when I have the scripture right here in in front uh, front and center next to my prayer list it that's what really helps me um, if you are not like me and you don't like to, to do your own thing and you want a little bit more structure, I've seen others who are, you know, each day, here we'll turn to the next blank page, they, they simply write the scripture out for each day. You can use the planner like that. Every day you have a scripture and the process of writing it really, I just encourage everybody to do some kind of scripture writing. You know, your handwriting doesn't have to look perfect. Don't worry about it. But the act of doing it really presses that scripture into you. It slows you down. It helps you to look at every word and to really think about and meditate on scripture. And it will become a delight to you. Um, so you can do that. You can have each day. And then, you know, if you want to put a little stamp or um, I pulled out some of the things from Visual Faith Ministry and gosh, there's so much over there. I mean, if you haven't been just spend some time and looking at the website and seeing all the things that these are free resources, you guys, you don't even have to have any kind of artistic talent. These lovely ladies are sharing um, God's gift with you and you can definitely tap into that. I know many congregations are using sermon notes and the children's bulletins. Well, grab one of those or, you know, make sure that you're looking online and coordinating it with um, the gospel reading or the scripture readings for the weekend. I could easily take this one from Katie. It was the Matthew 20 scripture gospel lesson. That was also the sermon lesson. And I could take that Either I could put my whole notes in there, why not? Washi tape them, staple them, whatever. Or I could just take that picture and I can glue it right on there, maybe write out the whole scripture next to it, add some color. Lovely way to spend time in the Word. Um, so you can do that with all kinds of the bulletin and the sermon notes and all of that. So definitely something to check out. Another thing I found were the versicles. I mean, wow, these are really, really beautiful drawings. And can't you see taking some of those and putting them up in here? You don't, you don't have to recreate everything. Oh, look at the cross with the fire. Ooh, fan into flame, your faith, yay. Okay, so those were awesome. Uh, Pat Meyer, cute. Look at these, memory card set one. I mean, these kids are adorable, look at them. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at he's got little clogs on. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Anyway, yeah, take some of these. You can cut them out. They don't have to stay in a big thing. Just cut out the parts you want, but look at the verse. Spend the time in the word. So definitely something. Look at I love that open book there. That would be great in my faith planner. I could take out that little part. Put them on here. Um, same with the lunch hogs. I mean, these are some that, that I contributed, and I might be taking, in fact, let's do that right now. I'm going to take these light bulbs. I love light bulbs. And I'm going to just quickly, 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 
cut them out and leave off shine for a moment. Cut that out. I mean, and I could, like, I'm going to stick these under here. Come on, get under there. Look at that. Poop. That's awesome. I will glue that in later. Um, hey, I'm going to put some little shine rays or something in there. I don't know. I'm going to use it. I like it. Uh, but you could do that with any of these. So look on the Illustrated, or not the, look on the Visual Faith website and see some of the things that are absolutely free to download and then use however you want to. There are no rules. You have to find what works for you. I mean, some people say, oh, Karen, how do you do that? I want mine to look just like that. And I say, thank you, all glory to God, but find what works for you, okay? If you're if you're not, you know, one to do all the open spaces and, and all of that, then keep it just to the part that you can do. But because what's important is in the end is spending time in the Word, going through this process of writing or meditating or you know doing some research on a, a word or scripture and then praying about it how you know what does this teach me about god what does this um, say about myself is there something i need to really be talking to god about how can i pray this scripture into the life or of someone i love or in my relationships so that's that's what's really going to be awesome when you start doing this kind of practice so whatever you do um i remember i wanted to say too connie last week or the week before had talked about the the counting gifts well a faith planner could be used for that too um in like normally november you know i'll do a gratitude list or really focus on gratitude and that's something that i do in my faith planner as well let me grab last year's real quick and we'll look in November all right so in November here's some things that I was counting grateful all the little things numbered them and all of that so definitely something you could transfer into again it's when you see it all come together I think that is the part that's most rewarding for me so the process is, is awesome and it doesn't have to be really elaborate. It doesn't have to be super time consuming. You are just working through the word, spending time in the word and recording it. That way you can look back, wow, what was I praying for back in uh, February? And wow, look how God answered those prayers. I mean, that that's something that's really special, too, when you can go back and look at how God um, responded to some prayers. And, you know, that strengthens your faith for the here and now when you can see how God has responded and uh, maybe not in the way you expected, but you can look back and be like, yeah. My God knows better than I do, that's for sure. And I'm so grateful and thankful for him to uh, take care of me in such loving, loving ways. So let me know if you have some questions. I'm kind of wrapping this up right here. And um, if you want to know anything about my process or where I get some stuff, um, you don't have to have a whole lot, um, you know, a good pen. Uh, speaking of pens. My favorites are these Micron Pigma pens. I like the O2, which is just the size of the, the nib. It's really good for writing. And also it's it's one that I can go over with with color. So it doesn't bleed. It doesn't really bleed through when I'm in my Bible also, which is nice because those pages are thinner. And, you know, I like those a lot. But whatever, you know, you can grab Crayola markers. You can grab whatever. It's It's not always about the end the end product so yeah let me know if you have any questions you guys I'm, I'm so glad you're tuning in tonight for this and and um, come see me I post my faith planner every Saturday on Instagram and on my Facebook page and um, during the week then I'm posting all kinds of Bible journaling also so be inspired to get into the word and to um, do something 
with it and work with it and handle it and and you will be incredibly blessed so thank you and um i think diane probably has some final comments and some things and we'll continue with any questions that you have thank you so much So wasn't that just wonderful? I'm just blown away uh, by, by Karen. We are so blessed that she is a visual faith ministry coach and she's part of our community and that God has blessed her with this wonderful creativity and that she has such consistency. And if you are not her friend on Instagram or Facebook, please friend her because you will just be so inspired every single day uh, when you see her post that while wow, she did that again. So I was going to post a, a, just a couple of the comments and then we're going to wrap it up tonight. Um, Denise Miller had a really good comment about choosing a planner and some things to think about. And this is really true. Do you want your week to start on a Sunday or a Monday? Do you want your page to be horizontal or vertical? How much space do you want? And what type planner binding works for you? So those are some really good um, tips and hints. Thank you, Denise. And um, Jenny said, thank you for a very great evening, Karen. I won't sleep a wink with all these ideas racing in my brain. I agree. And somebody else said, I want to just stop watching right now and I want to go do all these things. That's the whole point of our Tuesdays at 8. It's to encourage you and to inspire you and that hopefully we will be able to go back and answer the question of how, how, how are these things impacting and changing me and hopefully transforming us into willingly desiring and spending as much time as we can with God. So I'm going to close us up now unless anybody has any further questions. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you. You're right. Belinda said, your posts are the first thing I see in my Facebook feed. Thank you very much, Karen. And I totally agree. Um, let's see. Thank you for letting us see your planners, Karen. And those are great. And Connie replied, we have 72 visual faith meet ministry regional coaches check out our connections on the website you will be meeting them here on tuesdays at eight yes we have our whole fall planned we will be doing something every single week and i hope you will join us again and come back and thank you so much karen thank you for all of the people who participated and commented it's been a really wonderful evening